Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 30. I am going to show you how to make a couple different tassels that you can use in your jewelry making. One is going to be using some ribbon and that sort of thing and the other will be using chain and wire and actually you can mix and match as well if you like. These are great for pendants, to make earrings, to use as charms on charm bracelets, maybe in a smaller fashion um, and actually the one I'm going to show you with ribbon you can use on top of your holiday gifts um, instead of a bow maybe you put a tassel so these are a lot of fun to make um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started okay for our first tassel tutorial. Um, we're going to be making these chain tassels and as you can see in this case I made these tassels into a pair of earrings which of course you can do. Um, it would make a great um, pendant as well if you hung it from chain. Um, you can make a Christmas ornament out of it. just wanted to show you too that this is a um, tutorial in my book, Wire Wrapping for Beginners, um, and that book is available both in ebook form or in print form. This is, as you can tell, the print book. Um, and if you go to wirewrappingforbeginners.com, you can find out more about that. There's lots of other projects, um, but this, the earring tassel is one of them, um, and I'm just going to show you how to make the tassel itself. So. You can check that out if you like. So these are the materials and tools that you need for the tassel. You'll need a chain and you can use whatever chain you like. Um, I have a bag of kind of scrap chain or just like little kind of leftovers of chain that's perfect for this project. You need 20 gauge a half hard round wire you will need wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and you may want to have a second pair of pliers um, to help you with wrapping, so I'm going to be using bent nose pliers. You will also need a bead for this project. You can use a cone bead, or you can use a bead like I'm going to use. It has a nice large bore hole. Um, just it makes it a little bit easier for this project if the bead is nice and big you can kind of pull the chain up into it a little bit. Um, a cone bead is probably ideal. I don't happen to have any for some reason right now or I would show you that but you know a cone bead kind of has the big large opening and it looks like a cone and it has smaller and so when you um, and I'll you know obviously show you a second are pulling the chain through you can hide the chain all together with that sort of bead um, but the speed will work fine too if you have that instead of a cone bead so to get started I am going to cut four pieces of chain the same length. Um, depending on what you're going to be using these for, you may want them to be longer or shorter. If you're making earrings, depending how long you want your earrings to be, you know, is how long you would want to cut the chain. I'll let that up to you. Um, the earrings I made before are about an inch and a half long. Um, but you know you can make longer or shorter whatever your preference and if you're making a pendant you might want to have you know twice as long as that even so um, like I said you can use any chain you want it doesn't have to match um, and what I like to do is just sort of thread the chain onto a piece of wire or a head pin or something like that so it's easier to hold them all straight um, 
because chain tends to bunch up. So you can see how it's looking. And then when you cut, it will be easier to, to cut it straight. Although you might not want to cut it straight. You might prefer to have different lengths of chain. And I have made earrings like that before, and it looks pretty cool. I like that look, too. So, however you prefer. Um, and I'm saying four pieces of chain, but you can use however many pieces of chain you like. Alright, so you can just use um, your wire cutters to cut the chain. And however best you, you know, however it works best for you. So I'm just sort of hanging, and I've decided just to go, I have this one shorter piece of chain, um, so I'm just going to make all my chain to that length. And of course, if you're making a pair of earrings and you want them to match, um, you want to be careful about what, um, what kind of chain you have uh, on here, or maybe it doesn't matter that much to you. Um, so... There we have it. And this isn't an exact science because um, the chains will be have different size um, links, so you might not be able to get it exact. And honestly, that is okay. All right. So the next thing you're going to want to do is cut a piece of wire. My piece of wire is about five inches long, um, and I actually cut it off my spool while I was threading them on here, the chains on here, to kind of hold it. So you can do that part first if you prefer, um, and then you can just already have the chain on here, um, and then you just put the chain on however you like. And now I'm just going to kind of fold this piece of wire in half, bend it, kind of find the middle, and then I'm going to make a twist. So all the wires, or all the chains, excuse me, are in this loop of wire. And, you know, I'm going to do two twists actually. Alright, now, this is where you grab your bead and you slide it over this wire. And push it down so that it is covering the twist you just made. And so, you try to make it so, you know, the, the chain is coming right from the bead it looks like. So push it down as far as it will go. And now we're just going to make a wire wrap loop at the top, and that's really all there is to it. So you want to grab your round nose pliers and hold on to one of the wires with them. And you're just going to leave enough space kind of in between um, the pliers and that bead so that just a little bit of space so that you can fit a wire through and bend the wire down toward you and then between the round nose pliers and the bead and then grab your chain nose pliers I'm just going to kind of push this other wire out of the way and then you're going to want to make sure that that loop is straight above the bead so if you've watched <laughs> my tutorials before you know how I do this um, so you can just do it like right here, fix it. Um, what I usually do is hold the loop that I just made, and as I go around with that loose wire one time, I straighten out the loop. All right, and then you just switch hands. Just let the chain kind of dangle there. Um, and then you're just going to wrap this wire around a few times Oops. and that's I'm using my bent nose pliers to do this and if you don't have bent nose pliers um, you could use your round nose pliers and just hold by the very tip um, but you'll have to cut off the, the tip of the wire because it, it will leave a mark 
All right, so that's the first side, and then the other loose wire you're going to wrap around also a few times. Just kind of following the way the wire wants to go. All right. And then just trim that wire closely with your wire cutters. And then tuck in, kind of push down the loose ends of the wire. And then just make sure they're not poking up. And you have a tassel. Now, you can use this for, like I've said, a number of things. If you're making a pair of earrings, you want to make a second one identically like that. Um, and then just add earring wires. So I'm going to show you a second tassel tutorial. Okay, for this tutorial, I am actually going to use lace. Um, you can use the same idea with ribbon. Um, and you'll need a pair of scissors, too. I actually will show you over on my blog a different, using different materials, um, a photographic tutorial of this as well. And that one will show you kind of a really uh, pretty tassel to use on your packages. I think lace would be beautiful on packages, too. Um, but I'm... We'll show you with ribbon too there, but for right now in this video we're using lace. You need a pair of scissors and that's really all you need. So to get started, um, you just want to decide how big you want this tassel to be. Um, think about what you're going to be using it for. Is it going on the top of a gift or are you going to use it for a ornament on your tree? Um, are you using it for decorating? Maybe you're going to use it as a kind of funky necklace. Um, so think about what you're going to use it for and what size you want. And then you're going to want to cut um, however long you want it, but um, you know, multiply it by two because you'll be folding it over. So um, you don't even need to measure really. You can just see what you like, cut it, and then kind of use that first one as a template for the rest of them. Um, and again, I'm going to, you can make this however fluffy you want. <laughs> so I'm going to use four pieces and all this lace is exactly the same on the one I'm doing right now. Um, but you might want to add in diff a couple different colors and make it prettier or funkier. Maybe you want it just simple like this one. Um, so however you actually want to do it is perfectly fine. Um, use your imagination. So we're going to just take all this lace, line it up, and then fold it in half. And then you can kind of make it, you know, maybe not line it up perfectly um, on top of each other. Fluff it out a little bit. And then you can use a different ribbon or you can use, I'm just going to use another piece of lace um, to make the top um, like a little loop for it. So I'm just going to put that through. So all of the other pieces are folded over it. I'm just going to tie it. So this will be kind of what um, it hangs from, where my tassel hangs from. So you might want to use something different for this part if you want. I'm just making a knot. So we have that. And now, finally, it's really simple. Um, you just hold all this together and tie below that hanger you just made. Tie either, like I said, another piece of lace or you could use something else. So I'm going to tie this tightly. And 
and you could make this part of the design or you know even make the pieces long so they kind of fit in or you can make it shorter like I'm doing here it's trimming off the excess and then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the bottom because mine ended up not being all even but we can just go ahead and trim them Oops. Uh, kind of messed that up a little. <laughs> Alright. And so then you have this cute tassel. So this is kind of a elegant or kind of Victorian-ish tassel I have here. If you were having like a Victorian tree or something like that, this would be perfect. Um, but you could also make a tassel with ribbon you can do it with yarn however you want to do it so there you have your two options you have chain you have ribbon and you see this one I made a lot bigger than this um, you know you can make this smaller you can make this bigger um, just use your imagination you have the general idea now um, you can mix and match you could add lace to the chain one or chain to the lace one or ribbon to whatever um, and just use your imagination and your creativity and have fun so I hope you enjoyed today's project the chain tassel I have actually made it into an earring tutorial um, the earrings that I am wearing and it is part of my book wire wrapping for beginners now that book is an ebook that you can purchase and have it automatically sent to you via email immediately in full color or you can buy the print book version of it so a real physical book in your hands um, and the inside is actually in black and white but it's exactly the same material inside and you can purchase that as well if you go to wirewrappingforbeginners.com you will find out how to make a purchase if you like it makes an excellent Christmas present if you're looking for that sort of thing right now <laughs> depending when you're watching um, because the book you can wrap up put under some stocking or if you prefer the ebook you can just tell me where you want me to email it to and I will take care of it and there you go a holiday gift done <laughs> so um, you'll find all the information at wirewrappingforbeginners.com Thank you so much for watching today. You will find show notes on Thursday over at my blog at KimberlyKohler.com and it's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I-E-K-O-H-L-E-R.com. The link will be below this video if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and I have this great 14 day free mini e-course if you come over to my website and sign up for my newsletter. Um, it's an introduction to jewelry making. Um, it has a lot about working with wire and it kind of gets you ready for the Wire Wrapping for Beginners book that I was discussing before. So if you're not sure if you're quite ready for that book, if you take the e-course, um, the free e-course, then you will 100% be ready for that book at the end of it. So come on over to KimberlyKohler.com and you can find everything you need to know there. Have a great couple of weeks.